Assalamu alaikum and good afternoon from Malaysia. In this session, we are going to talk about the basic concepts underpinning the modern methods of students assessment. Going straight to the first concept, which relates to assessment and learning, we all know assessment drives learning. If focus of our assessment is recall of information, it would promote road memorization and superficial learning among students. On the other hand, if we are assessing the application of knowledge or problem solving, it would promote comprehension of information and deep learning among the students. Problem solving is a logical, analytical, and systematic approach to establish the cause of a patient's problem, planning treatment, monitoring the patient's progress, and supervising convalescence and rehabilitation. The second concept relates to constructive alignment. The focus of our teaching is not what we teach, but what we would like our students to learn and how can we help them to achieve that goal. Therefore, the first step is to define the intended learning outcomes for our students. Then teaching and assessment are designed and implemented to align with these outcomes. Learning and teaching activities are designed to meet the intended learning outcomes, whereas assessment methods are designed to assess the intended learning outcomes. Here is an example of a constructive alignment. The learning outcome, upon graduation, a student will be able to perform lumbar puncture under super BN and interpret the results. Based on this learning outcome, the content is identified, teaching learning strategies are decided, and assessment methods are chosen. For example, to teach physiology of CSF, its functions, production, and circulation, the most appropriate teaching methods would be either an interactive lecture or directed self-learning. And the most appropriate assessment method would be a written examination, either in the form of a structured essay question or multiple choice questions. On the other hand, to teach aseptic technique, the most appropriate teaching learning strategy would be a practical session, either in clinical skill lab or in clinics. And the most appropriate assessment would be in the form of an OSCE or OSCE. Blueprinting is the appropriate spread of capabilities to be assessed. Capabilities are selected from different systems and from different domains, in fact, both for teaching and assessment. Blueprinting leads to constructive alignment. It ensures validity and authenticity, and it avoids unnecessary duplication. For example, same condition being asked in multiple assessment methods, including written examination and clinical examination, such as long case and short case. Validity and reliability are both about how well a method measures something. Reliability refers to the consistency of a measure whether the results can be reproduced under the similar conditions, whereas validity refers to the accuracy of a measure, whether the results really do represent what they are supposed to measure, or the assessment method really 
measures what it is supposed to measure. Next concept relates to feasibility. We may have an excellent method of assessment, but the question is whether it is feasible. Would institution maintain the same standards over time with increasing number of students or changing the situations and environment? The sixth concept relates to purpose of assessment. Based on its purpose, the assessment is divided into three types. Assessment for learning, which is formative assessment. Assessment of learning, which is summative assessment. And assessment as learning, which is continuous assessment. For assessment of learning, the examinations are placed at the end of the instruction module or a year, examinations are separated from the educational process and examinations have almost exclusive purpose to determine whether the students have acquired sufficient knowledge and skills to be declared pass or otherwise fail. In assessment for learning, the assessment process is embedded within the educational process. It serves to steer and foster the learning of each individual student to the maximum of his or her ability. Therefore, the assessment is used as a program for learning. The assessment for learning provides an inclusive mechanism for encompassing assessment of all the relevant attributes before experts make high stake decisions for these students. Seventh concept relates to appropriate methods of assessment. And if we look it based on the Miller's pyramid, the first two levels, which is knows and knows how, are best assessed by written examinations, which may be in the form of multiple choice questions or essays. The shows how level is assessed by clinical simulations, for example, by OSCE or by long case and short case examination. The DUS level is best assessed by workplace based assessments, which is logbooks observations and 360 degree uh, feedback mechanism. On top of it is placed the interestable professional activities. In other words, how confident the examiner is that a student after graduation would be able to perform these procedures independently and confidently. The eighth concept relates to programmatic assessment. Regarding assessment, a considerable shift in thinking has taken place from assessment of learning to assessment for learning. This has been tipped as a revolutionary step in the assessment of undergraduate medical students. This change has led to a broadened perspective in the assessment. For example, the type of constructs the assessment tries to capture, the way information from various sources is collected and collated, the role of human judgment, and the variety of psychometric methods to determine the quality of the assessment. Programmatic assessment is an approach in which information about the learner's competence and progress is continually collected and analyzed with the intent to, number one, inform the learners and their mentors for continuous improvement, and number two, to make high-stake 
decisions at the end of a training for progression of the student. Progressive and programmatic assessment is meaningful by content, not by method of assessment. For example, results of parts of a multiple choice question examination may be combined with parts of an OSCE to draw conclusion as to the examinee's progress in multiple domains of performance, including knowledge and problem solving skills. Progressive and programmatic assessment is meaningful by content. One method of assessment can test multiple domains. For example, long case examination can test communication skills, psychomotric skills, knowledge, problem solving skills, etc. The results should be collated in the form of domains and not according to assessment method. For example, knowledge domain will receive input from multiple sources apart from multiple choice questions. These sources may include long case examination, OSCE, and problem solving exercises. In programmatic assessment, information from all assessment sources can be used to inform about all the competency domains. And all competency domains are informed by various information sources. OSCE, for example, can also assess knowledge. Written examination, for example, extended matching questions or multiple uh, modified essay questions can also assess decision-making skills. Communication skill station can also assess knowledge. Based on the review of the results, Remediation plans are provided. A continuous dialogue between the learner and a dedicated staff member, for example, a mentor or a supervisor, focuses on the analysis of competence development and personal development and feedback and remediation. Instead of conventional assessment, such as taking a high stake multiple choice question examination, followed by a pass fail decision. Programmatic assessment addresses both the attained competence levels and their developmental process. Programmatic assessment is collecting and combining assessment information based on the content from various instruments valuing the resultant information to come to decisions and taking action upon these decisions. For this purpose, we need to answer following questions. What information needs to be collected? How to collect the information? How to combine the information from various instruments? how to value the resultant information and how to make decisions and how to implement the decisions. For example, the domain of knowledge can be tested through multiple assessment methods. In other words, multiple choice questions, structured essay questions, modified essay questions, OSPI or OSCE, long case and short case examinations, all of these assessment methods can contribute to the assessment of knowledge. OSCE, OSPI, long case, short case, and 360 degree assessment can contribute to the domain of psychomotor skills. Analytic skills, decision-making skills, and problem-solving skills domains can receive input from modified essay questions, structured essay questions, OSP, OSCE, long case, short case, and 360-degree assessment. Communication domain of assessment can get 
results from OSCE, OSPI, long case, short case, small group learning sessions, and 360 degree assessment. Long case examination, short case examination, 360 degree assessment, including logbook and portfolio, projects or small group learning sessions can contribute to the assessment of domain of professionalism, attitude and teamwork. In this way, different assessment methods can contribute to different domains of assessment. Therefore, the information is collected and results are compiled based on the content and not on the method of assessment. With that, I thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, you can always WhatsApp me and I would try my best to answer as soon as possible. Thank you again for your attention.